In this game, Yefim Geller sacrificed a piece in order to occupy the queen side and the center and completely seize the initiative on that part of the board. However, Branstein's phenomenal stroke on the king side came like a thunderbolt from a clear sky, and it turned out that there was no way Geller could have prevented the spectacular checkmate in three moves. Branstein started with d4, and Geller played the Nims of Indian defense, knight c3, bishop b4, and Branstein opted for the variation with a3, which leads to the immediate exchange on c3, after which, on the one hand, white has the advantage of two bishops, on the other hand, white's pawn structure is damaged. And Geller immediately castles kingside, which Branstein in his annotations doesn't like. According to Branstein, it's too passive and uh, it's an early castling, it's premature. Uh, instead of this, Branstein suggests more active knight c6, followed by knight a5, b6, and bishop a6, and both the bishop from a6 and the knight from a5 would attack white's main weakness on c4. But Geller castles kingside, which is a little bit passive. Branstein plays f3, threatening to completely occupy the center with his pawns by playing e4. And Geller prevents it. d5. Now e4 is under black's control. c takes d, e takes d, e3, bishop f5. Now the bishop also controls the crucial square. Knight e2. Knight d7, and here, instead of a move that would look more natural, namely knight g3, which would come with tempo attacking the bishop, and from g3 the knight would control the e4 square and would have supported the possible breakthrough in the center in future, instead of this, Branstein plays knight f4, which at first sight looks a little bit uh, strange. It's not clear what the knight is doing on f4. And this move comes without tempo, and the knight isn't controlling the e4 square. However, the game will show that knight e4 was a much more sophisticated move. Because the knight on f4 is placed much more actively than on g3. And besides that, on g3 the knight would have blocked the g-pawn. But on f4 it isn't blocking the pawn. And that's exactly what Branstein is going to do. He isn't going to play for e4. He's going to start a pawn storm on the king side, as black has already castled. c5. Geller immediately attacks the center. Bishop d3, exchanging the active uh, bishop. Bishop takes d3, queen takes d3, and rook e8. Geller's play is extremely uh, logical. So he's activating his rook and placing it on the half-open file, exerting the pressure on this file. Branstein castles kingside and Geller activates his second rook, rook c8. And Branstein plays rook b1, attacking the pawn on b7. And the natural uh, defensive move b6, which is a natural reaction, would have been too passive, because on b6 the pawn would have blocked the queen's diagonal. That's why Geller played queen a5 activating his queen and leaving the pawn unguarded. And Geller thought that Branstein wouldn't capture on b7, because after rook takes b7, he can play knight b6, and it turns out that the rook doesn't have any moves, and it's stuck on b7. And black is simply threatening to play c4 with tempo, closing the white queen's diagonal so that it doesn't control the a6 square, after which black will play Queen a6, and the rook will be trapped. However, in spite of all this, Branstein still captured on b7. And Geller played knight b6. And Branstein completely ignores the c4 square, uh, c4 threat, followed by queen a6, and starts his pawn storm on the king side. g4. Actually, he doesn't ignore it. Actually, he anticipated it. So, he played g4, and he's threatening to play g5, pushing away the knight. That's why Geller played h6, which is a mistake, which is a serious mistake, because it is weakening the g6 square. Instead of this, it would have been better to play c4. And after queen can move either to f5 more actively, or on c2, for example, after queen c2, queen a6, the rook is trapped, however, Branstein prepared the exchange sacrifice. Rook takes b6, queen takes b6, and g5. 
pushing away the only defender of the d5 pawn. And now you can see the strength of the knight on f4. It is attacking the weakness. The knight must retreat, and after knight d7, the pawn falls. And for the exchange, white has two pawns and a great knight and two pawns in the center. And white pawns will advance. So for the exchange, white has a great compensation and a better position. However, this would have been better than what black did. Because here still black can try to hold, to resist. But after h6, black is losing very fast, as you will see. And actually, h6 doesn't prevent g5. Because with his next move, h4, Rammstein renews the threat. And there is nothing black can do against g5. And uh, Gettler decided to completely destroy Brandstein's position on the queen side and in the center and completely seize the initiative on that territory. So c takes d followed. Brandstein continues his advance on the king side, g5. And now rook takes c3, which at first sight looks like a good move because it comes with tempo attacking the queen. Doesn't work because of simple bishop d2 attacking the rook and pinning it. And if rook takes d3, bishop takes a5, and after the exchange of the queens, it turns out that both the rook and the knight are under attack, and there is no way to save both of them. That's why Geller decided to sacrifice his uh, piece and completely destroy the center and the queen side. So d takes e, and Brandstein accepted the sacrifice, capturing on f6, and now Rook takes c3. Now that the d2 square is under black pawn's control, so bishop d2 doesn't work. So, as you see, Geller completely dominates in the center and on the queen side. And he has created two connected passed pawns. The one of these pawns is on the, sixth, on the third rank. It needs simply two moves to promote. All black pieces are extremely active on the queen side. However, on the king side, the situation is absolutely different. It's the opposite. The king is alone on the king side. All black pieces are on the queen side. And the king is alone. And Brandstein skillfully exploits this. And after his next move, Geller immediately resigned. Actually, white has a forced checkmate in three moves. And you can pause the video and try to find it. So... The rook is still on the 7th rank. The pawn is very dangerous. It's on f6 attacking black. The knight is greatly placed. All these pieces are attacking the king side. And of course the queen. So, although black dominates in the center and the queen side, white, of course, must have some deadly attack. Probably you found rook takes f7, which is also winning on the spot. However, it's not a uh, checkmate in three, it's checkmate in six moves. And besides that, from aesthetical point of view, this move is wrong. So uh, if the king captures, then of course, a uh, checkmate in two moves would follow in this way. Or if rook takes queen, then again, checkmate in two moves would follow. No matter where the king moves, knight g6 would have been checkmate. However, Instead of this, black can play rook c7. And after that, there is no checkmate in 2. Because the rook from c7 is defending the 7th rank. And in this case, white would capture the rook. Then knight d7, again, blocking the 7th rank. Rook takes d7. Then rook e4, closing the queen's diagonal. And after this, rook takes g7, check, king f8. Then eliminating the defender of the e6 square, so the queen sacrifice would follow, and then knight e6 check and checkmate. So that would be checkmate in seven moves. And uh, not so beautiful. Beautiful, of course, but what Brandstein did is incomparably more beautiful. And besides being more beautiful, it's also a stronger move and much more precise move because it leads to a forced checkmate in three moves. So. Queen g6, creating a terrible threat, checkmate in 1 on g7. And after this, Geller immediately resigned.
because the only move is f takes g, but now we can see why the queen was sacrificed. Now the rook's way to g7 is open, and this rook, which looked like a doomed piece, now plays the decisive role in the attack. Rook takes g7 check, and no matter where the king goes, knight g6 would be checkmate. Hit the like button as it's really helpful for the channel growth and subscribe. See you in next videos.